will come upon them as labor upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you brothers are not in darkness, so that this day should not overtake you as a thief. You are the sons of light and the sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. And I want to open up also this morning as we can see that everything is happening, but God is still in control. And in the scripture where it says, don't be surprised, you know, don't be caught off guard. Um, we know these, these times are going to happen, but I want to bring in the scripture that says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing in everything. This is the, the theme of our song. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So that everything that we're going through, whatever it is, we have to give thanks. Amen. That is the perfect. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we cannot live like the world and be walking around, you know, with feeling defeated. We have to give thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the will of God. Amen. And we are victorious in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Spirit of the Lord is here.
whole church to sing with us. Or she declare that.
in the house. You know, I, I expressed earlier this week, uh, my son Jonathan turned 21. We have Ziki Torres in the back way, in the back way there. We have Ziki at the birthday 15 years old. And then we also have our very own, one and only, Eddie. He turned 22. Just wish him a happy birthday as well today. It's good to see you. Is there anybody here for the very first time? Do we have any first time visitors this morning? Amen. Praise God. Brenda, Sartella, welcome to Breakfast Community Church. Kenya Stefani. Stefani, I hope I'm saying it right. Santana Rose, it's good to see you here. Nina Ross and Christina Ortiz, welcome this morning to Breakfast Community Church. It's good to have you in the house of God this morning. Go ahead and take a few minutes this morning. We'll have the timer up. Uh, you'll know when to get back to your seats and greet one another in the name of the Lord. God bless you this morning.
Good morning, church. As we continue this morning's service, as you make your way back to our seats, we're going to uh, go into our announcements. Uh, first announcement, uh, Wednesday, November 25th, we're going to kick off our ho holiday season with, our, uh, with the Lord, and we are going to have our first acoustic worship night, uh, and also this will be our first service in our new building. So this is going to be November 25th. Uh, be prepared. Come on out for a night of worship, kick off the holidays, and uh, in the new building. Also, Men's and Women's Discipleship is going to be this Saturday, November 14th. Get excited for that. This Saturday, November 14th, it's going to be here at the church, 9 a.m. Come and, come and join us as we dig into the Word and also fellowship. Also, they're still in need of nursery workers for Wednesday nights. And uh, we're cur encouraging all members of BCC who would like to volunteer, uh, but especially the moms who currently have kids or babies in the care already. Please see Sister Shyla to get involved with uh, the nursery ministry. Also, marriage enhancement. We are selling the 2021 coupon books for only $25. And these proceeds are going to the building fund. Um, so far, I think they said we're up to swamp coolers, so the summer's going to come. <laughs> so invest in, in the building so that we ain't sweating out there. Amen. Um, it's for a good cause, and I know everybody likes to eat, go out, dining, entertainment. If you, like, use one of these coupons, if you're somebody who wants a return on your investment, it comes really quick. Amen. And also, uh, it's a good gift for friends, uh, family who love to use coupons for the holidays. Also... Uh, join us Wednesday nights here at 6 p.m. and also at 9.30 a.m. Um, on Sunday for corporate prayer. And that happens every Wednesday and Sunday here at BCC before the service. And if you need more information or you would like to get involved with a prayer ministry, you can see uh, Brother Robert or Sister Nefra in regards to that. And for the next announcement, I would like to call up Sister Nefra and Brother Robert. Good morning, everybody. I um, just wanted to make a quick announcement. Um, the prayer ministry, if I just wrote it down, so I'm going to read it. Uh, prayer ministry is raffling off the seven piece uh, DeWalt toolkit. Perfect for any carpenter, plumber, contractor, or do it yourselfer. <laughs> the seven piece toolkit includes a drill driver, impact driver, circular saw, oscillating tool, grinder, sander, LED work light, three batteries, and a charger and the heavy-duty carrying case. And then, um, tickets can be purchased for $25 um, cash only, okay? Cash only. <laughs> uh, you'll see myself or Robert uh, for any details, and the uh, winner for the raffle will be announced on the 29th during announcements, so it's Sunday service. And you don't have to be here uh, to be the winner, but you have to be here to claim the prize. And then lastly, all the proceeds are gonna go towards the building fund. So, God bless. Amen. This morning as uh, we prepare um, for our giving, if anyone's in need for a, a prayer card for the prayer needs, a tithing envelope, raise your hand and one of the ushers can assist you with any of those. Also, a building fund as we continue to invest into our new property. Uh, you can give several ways at BreakthroughPeoria.com or by downloading the Tide.ly app directly to your phone. You can also give that way. Also, uh, if you want to mail in your tithes or offering, you can mail them to Breakthrough Community Church at 8110 West Peoria Avenue, Suite 110, Peoria, Arizona, 85345. The address is also posted in the comments feed of the uh, Breakthrough website. Also, if you would like to give uh, by credit card, you can see Sister Nikki after service and she can assist you with that. Um, this morning, I'm gonna read a portion of scripture. This is in regards to giving to the needy in Matthew chapter six, verses one through four, the word of the Lord reads, be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. 
So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their full reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Amen. Let's pray for this morning's offering. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time, Father, that we're able to sow seed, Lord, into your ministry, Lord. Father, we know that you have the best in mind for your church, for your people, for your country, Father God. And we just want to honor you, Father God, with a portion of everything, Father, that you own anyways, Lord. We just sow this seed in faith, knowing, Lord, that it will go to reach the hearts and lives and households of each and every individual, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. We wanted to just come up for just a few moments. We had the fashion show, our second annual fashion show. And what a blessing it was. But we just wanted to take a moment because we didn't get a chance yesterday to thank each and every one of you. We couldn't even begin to name names, so we're not going to do that. But every donation, every person that brought food, every person that came, every person that prayed, every person that participated, uh, the crazy guys that got up here and made fools of themselves for us so we could laugh. <laughs> we really just truly um, appreciate it and it was a great success. We're still counting because we're still selling but we're over $5,000. Thank you. Thank you so much. When I was up here and we were worshiping, I'll try to get through this. I felt the Holy Spirit so much this morning. But the faithfulness of God so last year we made $2,200, and I just prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, I would like to make $5,000 this year. And I never, even not truly believing myself that that would happen, you know what I mean? But he is good to us, he is faithful to us. And I am so thankful for this church and for our pastor letting us have fun and be goofy and let me be who I am and not trying to change who I am. Because somebody should, because there's something wrong with me. But, you know, take me with my flaws and my issues, and, and I am madly in love with Jesus, and yes. I will do anything to help further this kingdom. And I'm just so thankful for you people that were just faithful and just worked hard and, and did whatever tedious things, of taking stuff out of the boxes and bags of stuff that people brought and labeling them and cleaning and... and your pastor with a bad back is up here ironing tablecloths. Him and <laughs> Freddie are ironing tablecloths. I mean, it just... You know, he doesn't exalt himself, he doesn't, he's just one of us. He's our brother in Christ, and he's just here to lead us. So I encourage you to, to follow him and, and devote yourself to this church, if this is your church, and, and jump all in. Amen? Amen? All right. Bless you. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. You know, it kind of reminded me when I was ironing yesterday. I was like, I remember back in the day when I used to put the, the creases here and the creases, I was like, 
I don't remember liking this back then either, you know. <laughs> but I was like, at least I have practice, you know what I mean? So praise God. Yeah, and you know, for those of you watching out there, it may seem a lot like, um, like you hear money, money, money a lot. And, and I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression. Um, before we were renters, amen, and giving to another building. But now God has blessed us with our own. Amen. And we have a mission in mind now. Amen. We could have built this place really beautiful, but we chose to make it just enough for us to have church, look nice, and worship. But now God has a temple for us. He's got a place of worship that we want to do the best that we can to honor and glorify Him. And as I mentioned last week, you know, we have the blessing of the neighborhood. And that is huge. You know, they want to, they even want to help us beautify the place. And so we're very excited about that. And um, so I'm just, I'm just grateful that God has given us this group of individuals, believers here that are like-minded um, for us to do a task for him. And it's very humbling, you know, and very difficult um, because of my past history with um, different things in ministry um, to even talk about money and stuff like that. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, earlier this year uh, when we got our building, I've been delivered of that. Because I want you to grow as well. I grew by giving, and I want you to grow as well by giving. Um, you know, and if you don't have, then, then it's okay. It's okay. If you don't have, we'll pray that you do have, and you'll see the blessing one day of that. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, you can turn to the book of Galatians chapter 2. This is one of my favorite scriptures of all time here, because it is representative of what God has done for me. And so I take this scripture very personal in my life. As a matter of fact, it's caused me to change my life from what I used to be to who I am today. My identity has completely changed because of the power of God. And if there's ever a time when identity is at crisis, it's now. Amen? Our country's identity is in crisis right now. The people of this country are having identity crisis right now. The church right now is having identity crisis. And I'm talking about the church in general. Capital C, church in general is in crisis right now. And so we need to figure out what is happening. And I believe that God has given me this uh, scripture here to break down for you. Um, so if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The word of God reads, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Let's pray this morning. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, remove me this morning. Let your Holy Spirit speak to your people, Lord God. Let he who has an ear, let him hear this morning your gospel message, Lord. It's no longer us, it's you in us, Father, that matters. And we thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do today. Be glorified, be magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, you guys have all heard of Nike, the manufacturer, right? And they've made a, a fortune off of this phrase. What's the phrase? Just See? Just do it. That's the title of this morning's message. Just do it. So, when we go and look at this uh, portion of Scripture here... Um, you know, when we think of uh, Nike, we think, you know, oh, you know, uh, I see these people on there, and it always shows these real athletic people, right? They have the headband on, they got the shoes on, they got the, you know, the sweats on, and they think to themselves, well, you know what? If I buy that stuff, maybe I can do it too. Was, was that just me? <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Didn't you? Uh, we made fun yesterday, too, you know, because there was some shoes here, some Jordans, I believe it was. And we said, you know, if you buy these Jordans, you're going to be able to run faster. You're going to be able to jump higher. And I remember my kids when they were little, and they would get new shoes, and I would, can you run faster? Yeah, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. And I used to coax my, yeah, you can do it, you can do it. I'm like, oh, they're still slow. <laughs> I do like to run. I don't know why I bought them tennis. I should have bought them boots, because they don't move much anyway. <laughs> but you know... A lot of times people buy the shoes, the sweats, the headbands, they like to portray the, the I can do it or just do it, right? Um, but a few actually do. A few actually enter marathons. A few actually enter the game. 
Many times we just spectate instead. But we got the gear, we got the goods, but we don't get in the game. Oh, here goes Pastor. He's on one. All the fancy slogans don't inspire them to do anything but spend their money, and now their exercise equipment is in the garage. Collecting dust. As a matter of fact, some of us have gotten real ingenious ideas about our exercise equipment. Some of us hang clothes on it. <laughs> right? They just be <laughs> I make the most out of it. I'm like, is there anywhere I can put ammo? I mean, there's like hidden compartments or anything. Sometimes we hear the word, we believe the message, we take the equipment home, but we never do anything with it. And just like the tennis racket, just like the golf club, just like the jogging shoes, it all collects dust. The sermons we hear are moved, they moved us at one time, but now they're just collecting dust in our memory banks. We don't apply them anymore. They're just sitting there. They're used for other things. Like, oh, I remember the back in the day when I was involved in ministry. I remember back in the day when I played in front of thousands. I remember back in the day. And we live in the glorious days. When you talk to older people, and I love to talk to older people, what's one of the first things they talk about? You know, I spent time, as I mentioned uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, with uh, Don Wilson. And you know what I noticed? He's, old, he's an older gentleman. He didn't talk about the past. He talked about the future. Because no matter what, we're always growing. We're always learning. So in other words, the equipment that was placed upon him, he's still using. It hasn't been placed in a shelf. Even though he's retired now from CCV, he hasn't retired from ministry. No matter how old you are here today, I want to tell you something. There is no retiring from being a Christian. We got the gear. Are we using it? Are we hanging it up? It's collecting dust now. It has, doesn't have to be this way. This next text that I was talking about here, this portion of scripture that I was talking about, the Apostle Paul seen this message as well. He was talking about it, the Lord ministered to him, and he said it, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. He's stating, you know what? The old me is gone. The new man is right. And with the new man... The new Christian, the new believer becomes new tools are handed to us. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. I love what he says here now, the life I now live. And that's what I want you to think about here this morning. What life are you living now? We all had our glory days, but are we making new glory, new fresh anointings? that come into our life, that we're able to be still uh, relevant to the non-believer. I become all things to all men. That's what the Apostle Paul said. Hmm? In other words, he made sure he was relevant. He knew what was going on around him. He knew what was going on at the time. And he was able to minister to people. Paul is telling us here, just do it. Just live for Jesus. And here's how you can. Just do it. So the first thing that we need to do to just do it, to just get in the game, is we need to realize our position in Christ. Exactly who are we in Christ? Are we having an identity crisis in our Christianity, in our Christian walk? First of all, what we need to do is we need to re realize our past position. This little phrase, I am crucified, is in the perfect tense. It's in the perfect tense. This refers to a once and for all action that never needs to be repeated. I have been crucified. How many times was Christ crucified? One time. How many times were we crucified? One time. Paul is saying this, I was crucified when Jesus was crucified. And that crucifixion was a one time for all, once and for all time experience. I was crucified, and I stand crucified, and I stay crucified with Christ. What does that mean for us? If you're saved here today, when Jesus died on the cross, you died with him. You can read about that in Romans chapter 6, verse 4 through 6, if you're taking notes this morning. 
It was here that the wages of our sins were forever paid in full. Romans 6.23, you can look that up or write it down in your notes. That's why the believer needs to uh, never needs to fear death ever again. Before I gave my life to the Lord, I, I had a fear of dying. But you know, afterwards, I no longer think about that. I'm like, to live is Christ and to die is gain. That my whole outlook on death has changed because I no longer have nothing to lose. Death has lost its sting concerning my life. Has it lost its sting for you? Do you still fear it? The believer doesn't need to fear death any longer. We've already experienced it with Jesus and it no longer retains any power over us. You know, we used to be threatened all the time by uh, drug overdoses, alcohol overdoses, and the things that come along with it. But you know what? When we gave our life to Christ, those things were put away. We no longer fear death. We're not killing ourselves, in other words, anymore. Slowly, day by day. We have to realize our present position. Now, I want you to hear this, okay? And I want to say it even more than once, just so we can understand something here. What do we, re uh, we have to realize our present position. Many don't struggle with salvation, but we struggle with our position. You guys understand what I'm saying? We don't struggle with salvation. We're like, okay, I know I'm saved, but what we struggle with is our position. Who are we in Christ? What's our identity now? How are people going to see us? And see, oftentimes when we struggle with our position in Christ, we struggle with our position in church. If we are not right this way, we're not going to be right this way. We're going to have issues. We're going to be impatient. We're going to be easily angered. Right? We're going to be rude sometimes. We have to be right this way. Know who we are. Who our daddy is. Has anybody ever told you, you're just like your dad? You're just like your mom? Who's your daddy? Jesus. God the Father. And so we're to be a representative of Him. We should look more and more like Him every single day. Talk like Him more every single day. Pray like He prayed every single day. So that we can have that identity. People will say, you're a Christian. Yes, my Father is in heaven. But His Son lives in me. His Spirit lives in me. This is why we can come to church and do nothing but sit. We're saved, but we've forgotten why we are saved. My wife mentioned it earlier this week. We're saved to serve. Serve. What does that look like? What does that mean? That means you serve wherever you go, not just here at church. Wherever you go, we're serving people in one way, shape, or form. However God calls us to do it, we'll do it. If you've been called to preach, preach. You don't need a pulpit for that. This isn't the only place I preach. Amen? I preach at home. I preach when I go places. It's not like up here with a pulpit type preaching, but I preach. Our life in itself is our greatest sermon. The way we live, the way we conduct ourselves. Amen? If we're called to sing, it doesn't always need to be in front of a crowd. Amen? You know, there are certain people that will only sing with certain amounts of people in front of them. Certain venues only. Certain lights, certain amounts of money as gifts to see. But you see, that's not what God is calling us to do. If we're a worshiper, we worship at all times. Not just in front of people. Amen? We always worship. Paul doesn't tell us only that the believer is dead because he's been crucified with Christ. But also he's telling us here that the believer also lives because of Christ. You see, we die. The simple fact of the matter is, when we give our lives to Christ, we were crucified with Him, we died, but now we live again, and we live forevermore. Our life isn't going to be expanded to, if we're lucky, 90 to 100 years, or whatever the case may be. We live forevermore, along with the Father. The phrase, I live, is also in the present tense. When we, yes, when we died with Jesus, but faith in Him has raised us from the dead and took away the death of sting. The sting of death. The sting of death. 
I know, afterwards, you're going to help pastor, you, you messed up. Right there. I know. <laughs> I know I messed up right there. <laughs> For those of you who like to let me know that. And I ask him other questions sometimes, too. What was uh, the rest of the message about? Um, well, I'm like, uh-huh, go away. <laughs> Pluck out the log out of your... No, I'm just <laughs> You see, when we died with Jesus, we were also raised with Him from the dead. And that makes us eternally alive. You can read about that in John chapter 5, verse 25. On the surface, it almost seems kind of like a contradiction, right? But it, it also seems impossible that the one dead and alive are the same and at the same time. Yet this is how it is for us believers. We die to ourselves a little more every single day. Every single day. Don't you want to be a better Christian Every single day. One, and what I mean by better Christian is one who reads more than they did yesterday. One who prays more than they did yesterday. One who serves more, more than they did yesterday. That's what I'm talking about. There should be a forward motion when it comes to serving God. God adds and multiplies. And Satan divides and subtracts. So we should always be adding to our faith. He adds to our faith even. When miracles happen like... Well, in a sense, I believe it was kind of a miracle yesterday. We had someone pray for a certain amount. It went even beyond that. To me, miracles aren't always uh, deliverances and things like that. Those are amazing. Amen. But we have little tiny victories along the way. I am grateful for those little victories along the way. Amen. Are you? We have to be, we have to be grateful for a little victory here and there. We're dead to sin, but we're alive in Christ. Not just alive until our bodies cease to live, but alive forever. Just as we share His death, we also share in His life. Eternal life doesn't begin when you go to heaven. Did you know that? Your eternal life doesn't begin when you go to be with the Lord. Your eternal life started the day you give your life to Christ. Eternal life. You can experience eternal life. How does it make you feel knowing you're going to live forever with Jesus? It should give us an assurance. It gives us a hope. He is the blessed hope. Yes. Amen. Amen? When things look rough, and things look, they look rough a lot. Amen? Amen? I still have that hope that I'm going to be with my Father in Heaven. I have something to look forward to. And you know what? That brightens up my day. In my worst times, in my worst trials, that blessed hope comes through, it comes in clutch, I tell you that. It comes in right on time. Eternal life began the instant you received Jesus as your Savior. In John 10.10, 10, it talks about having the abundant life, and that's what He wants for us. How many of you are ready to experience the abundant life? Not just life, we, we, we're used to just living, oh, it's just another day, right? Just another Monday, just another Tuesday. No, we have to be living in an abundant life now that Jesus Christ has come into our life. Live like we are living an abundant life. In every facet, in every shape, every form. In John 10, 28, the Bible says that no one can snatch us out of his hands. Doesn't that give you hope too? That you can't be snatched away? I know it's, it's like my wife, she snatched me away from my parents. <laughs> but babe, I can't be snatched away anymore by anybody but Jesus. Amen? But it should give us an assurance that we can't be snatched away by anyone any longer. That is part of the blessed hope. You see, Paul's quick to credit his ability to live the Christian life to the Lord because of Jesus Christ. He knows what we need to know. That it's all about Him and not about us. If we want to live an abundant life, we have to remember it's about Him. And like I said, when we're good here, we're going to be good here. Amen? Our relationships will get better. They'll get stronger. We're not going to be so easily offended by one another. Because I can tell you, we can get easily offended sometimes, huh? Right? We can get, oh, you didn't call me today. I think I'm going to backslice. I went through trial because you didn't text back in time. I saw it was on red. 
Oh, not everybody knows what that is. I just found out too. That means they saw your message and didn't reply. Right? Am I right? Is that what that means? Right? Yeah? Okay. I have to look at the young people, all the old people are like, not, I mean, not old people, experienced people. <laughs> it's getting hot up here. We have to remember that with Christ living in us, that we have the power also of His resurrection. He died, rose again. Amen. True? Yes. You died if you gave your life to the Lord and rose again. That's one thing that I remind people of when I baptize them. You're going to go under someone that's about to die. And you're going to rise up someone that's new in Christ Jesus. Amen? So that phrase right there, Christ lives in me. That statement reminds us that not only did Jesus die on the cross for our sins, but he rose from the dead three days later. You know, I think about that in, in, in reality, I think, what a humble God we have. What a meek God we have. That left the glory in heaven. Can you imagine being in the most beautiful place in the planet? You know, I've been in some really beautiful places in Hawaii and Northern California. Beautiful places. And leaving that to go to a little ugly little town and have your vacation there. Think about that. A change of scenery. Can you imagine the change of scenery? That Jesus put himself through leaving heaven. The most beautiful place that a human mind can't even comprehend. Isaiah tried. He tried and couldn't express it good enough, I believe. And he left that for you. He left that for me. Amen? When I think about those things of what he did for me, he, first of all, he called us by name. That of all the things on the planet, the constellations and so forth, that he still remembers our name. I was just telling somebody a few minutes ago, I'm good with uh, faces, I'm not good with names. But he remembers your name. As a matter of fact, he knew your name before you were even in your mother's womb. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty powerful. That's part of Christ living in us. Because we also carry the power of his resurrection. He died in humility. He rose in power and great glory. And just as Jesus rose from the grave different than he was buried, everyone who comes to him by faith is different when they give their lives over to Jesus. Are you different this morning? Yes. How different? You know, there's probably, I can count on two fingers, the amount of times that I've seen Rich broken. But see, that's the power of God. That's the power of God. You can usually tell people that are not, you know, crybabies or whatever. You know, until I, until I gave my life to Christ, I didn't cry a whole lot. I did not cry a whole lot. I wasn't a crier, you know. But afterwards, oh, man, because the old me died. And I became a big old crybaby, and I, and, and I don't mind. I don't. I don't mind crying before people, before the Lord, because of, that's how good he's been. When you don't care what people think. Amen? I went to this uh, Renew concert on Friday with uh, Nikki and Eddie, you know, uh, before, uh, for his birthday. And I'll tell you what, man, it was powerful. It was powerful. They have it on the first Friday of every month at Church for the Nations. I want to encourage you guys to go. It's just worship. Just worship. And the young people that were there, the young adults that were there, older people were there, and we were all just worshiping together. And it was amazing. You know, uh, well, bless me, you know, was to see Elisa there just worshiping God. You know, gave her life, baptized her not too long ago. And just to see her there worshiping, I was like, you know what? Those are the payoffs of being faithful to God. If you would have told me 27 years ago, I would have been seeing what I'm seeing today and the miracles taking place in people's lives, I would have started a church a long time ago. Amen? But that's part. Allowing God to break you. It's not a bad thing. How many of you guys need to be broken of some things and let go of some things? Yes. You know, Jeremiah 18, if you want to be broken and know what that kind of looks like, you can read Jeremiah 18, the potter's clay. So that's a different message altogether. So we have the power of his resurrection. And because of the power of his resurrecting life works itself in the believer's life, makes them different than they were before they met him. 
The resurrected Christ dispenses his life to everyone who comes to him by faith. For you to give your life over to Jesus Christ in the very first place, you had to have faith that there was even a God in heaven. Right? So he gave you a measure, a portion of faith just to believe. That's the ABCs of Christianity. Acknowledge, believe, and confess. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Right there in the nutshell. We have to have that Christ in us and that we have to believe by faith. When a person is saved, death ceases to work in them, marking them as sinners. So when we come before God, and we have our petition before Him, because of the blood of Jesus, He doesn't see our sin. You know what that looks like? That looks like somebody that you truly have forgiven that's wronged you. You don't see them for that wrong any longer. You see them for that person who truly came to you and repented, and they never did that mistake again on how they offended you or hurt you. You see them as clean. You see them as pure. You see them with love. Not, oh, I'm going to stay away from that person because they're dirty. Mm -mm, I don't like what they did to me last week. I don't like what they did to me last month, last year. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you don't see them like that any longer because you forgave. Why did you forgive? Because Christ forgave you for what you did. It helps us to be clean and pure before God. You know why I think we sin a lot of times? Because we judge. We judge and then the Lord allows us to sin and remind us, hey, you're just like them. You just sin differently. You just sin differently. And so a lot, of, a lot of times we're so quick to judge people, but we sin differently than they do. And we're upset. Well, I, that sin's worse. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm, I'm offended at their sin. My sin's not that bad. God isn't going to go like this to me. He's going to go, hmm. No. <laughs> sin is sin. Look at the person next to you tell them, sin is sin. Tell them, don't judge me. Tell them, take out the lock. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on, somebody. We have the power of his resurrection. We also have the power of his residency. He lives in us. Do you know what that means? That means that when we do sin, he's right there watching. How we sin, he's right there. Why? Because he lives in us, through us. And we have to watch what we do. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We cannot forget that. But we do. I forget it. I forget it at times when I'm, you know, somebody cuts me off on the freeway or whatever, and I'm just like, you know, I got to get them back, you know. I, I, <laughs> Me and Rich were racing. By the way, I won. <laughs> he's only got V6 power. I got V8 power. So David, too, he's only got a V6, I think. <laughs> Amen? That's a whole other message, though. We'll save that one for later. We have the power of his residency. So he lives in us. Christ lives in me. Jesus doesn't come on the sinner and save him and change him forever. But he, he also moves into that person and starts giving them the power within to live like him. You don't have to sin. Right before we do, do we ever think, should I or shouldn't I? Was that, was that just me? Should I go a page further? Should I scroll left? Should I scroll right? Should I go on this site? Should I talk to this person? Should I be alone with this person? Do you see what I'm saying? It's right there in front of us. It's, it's presented out there. But if we're allowing his residency to come in, and as a matter of fact, he owns us. So he should be able to tell us what to do. If he's our Lord, not just our Savior, we love the Savior part, but the Lord part is a little difficult. The Lord part is a little difficult. Because if He's our Lord, when He tells us to do something, we do it. Oh, I love being saved. Oh, I'm not going to hell. But I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. 
Spirit. He promised to give the believer his spirit to dwell within him. Now, with the residency, we have to remember that when the Holy Spirit is present, the Holy Spirit should be lead. The Holy Spirit should be leading us, guiding us, directing us, teaching us, empowering us, comforting us. You know, that was one thing that they said at the renewed uh, worship night, was the guy said, you know what, America has gotten comfortable. And God didn't say that he was going to allow us to be comfortable. He said, I will be the comforter. That makes total sense, doesn't it? We're not called to be comfortable. But when we mess up, he will comfort us. When we're falling short, he will comfort us. When we're hurting, he will comfort us. He will help us. He will lead us. He'll guide us. He'll also correct us, the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he'll use a person to help correct you, to help you change. You ever notice how we like to be around the people that like to agree with us? But we stay away from the people who speak truth to us? One of the reasons why I asked someone into my life or allowed someone into my life that knew more about ministry than I did was because I needed more people in my life, more people. I have some of you that are really good at doing it, but I needed somebody that's been there, done that, speaking into me also too, to tell me the truth. When I spent time with Don, he spoke truth into me. I explained everything that's going on in the church, the building, leadership meetings, all the stuff. He said, I know the problem with your church. That's easy. You're the problem. I'm thinking, like, but what? <laughs> but, 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 but. He said, no, you're the problem. And I understood. I understood that. And I'm glad that he was able to speak into my life. Just that sentence right there. Because I needed to hear it again. God had already told me I was the problem. I was like, no, there's no way. Did you see what they just did? Am I the only one Lord, that sees what's going on? You see? Because I complain to God before I complain to man. But see, God used him to come in and say, you're the issue. And I had to accept that. Do we hang out with those people more? Or do we like, oh, yeah, yeah, you like this? Yeah, me too. Okay, let's go. Or do we have those people that will speak truth into us? Because truth is life. Amen? We want people to speak life into us. And that only comes from the Word of God. You see, as we yield more of our lives to Him, He produces more of Himself through us. The more Jesus we have in us, the more filling we have in us, the more we're going to pour out. So what comes out your mouth? Blessings? Curses? What comes out your mouth? Because what's poured in will come out. But if you're not being poured into by the Holy Spirit or by the correction of others, then you're not going to have a whole lot to pour out except for curses. You guys like sour coffee? What do you do with it? You toss it out. But good coffee you'll drink, you'll savor. And that's what truth is like. Truth. We have to savor truth. Some of us don't like the bitter taste of truth. But it actually it's sweet because it allows us to grow. Amen? It truly does. The fact that Jesus is within us is the only thing that makes the Christian life possible and productive for His glory. The only reason why we've made it this far is because the Holy Spirit is still with us, still living in us. We're still getting victories. We have a couple of setbacks here and there, but that's because of us, not because of the Holy Spirit. Because our God is victorious every single time. He does not lose. And if we listen to Him, we will not lose. It doesn't matter who's president. We will not lose. The church of God will not. The church of God, the doors to the churches will not be shut. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church, no matter who's leading. That's the bottom line. Amen. We are not of this world, but we're in it. And we're to be the light. We're to be the salt of the earth. Amen. That's what we're called to be. Do we have to be happy? No. Do we have to be glad? Yes. I will rejoice in what? Be glad. be glad in it. Amen. Another thing we need to do is rest in the provision of Christ. The provision of Christ. 
There is a supply of faith. The Bible says, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Paul makes this strong statement right here, that faith given to him by Jesus is what makes his life possible. Thank God we don't have to supply our own faith. Can you imagine what that would look like? When we believe God for the impossible, the impossible becomes possible. All things are possible with God. I'm not sure where you're at here today, but the Holy Spirit is telling me for someone here today, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Amen? There's a rustling in your heart, a stirring in your heart, and you're not knowing what to think. You have anxiety, you have stress, you have all these things. Slow your roll. Slow down. Be still. Know that He is God. He is in control. He is in charge. He is the master. He is the king. He is the savior. He is the deliverer. He is the one who sets free. Him and him alone. And we can have comfort in that knowing who our God is. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Our Savior provides us faith, the faith that we need to make the trip back home. Think of it this way. Would you agree that you're saved by faith? Yes? yes? Okay. The Bible tells us, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. So don't look to yourself, okay? It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Where did we get the faith in Jesus from? It's a gift from God the Father. A free gift. Don't you guys like free gifts? I like free gifts. Just uh, putting it out there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not my birthday, but I like free gifts anyways. God gives you the faith you need to be saved in the beginning. When we're saved, the Holy Spirit, who is the source of faith, comes to life in our hearts. And as we journey towards heaven, He dispenses faith in proportion to what uh, we have to face. Some of us face great trials, great, great uh, trials in our lives. And God will give you the measure of faith you need to overcome, to work through, to work out what we need to in life. You ever wonder why, if you're married, you ever wonder why your spouse is so opposite of you? Can you imagine marrying somebody that was just like you? <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> and you know what? When you want to become a power couple, you're going to embrace one another's differences. You're going to embrace one another's differences. You should be different. Because I know many times when I want to come in here and bring a hammer, my wife says, maybe you should put some cushion around that hammer. And then I listen to her, and then it becomes a message that people can grab something from. That's part of <laughs> Rich. He testifies that they're both hammers. <laughs> it's difficult. We have to have the balance. Amen. We have to have that balance. That's why our spouses are so different than we are. God knew what he was doing when he put us together. Amen. And if you learn to embrace those differences, you will see God move. Amen. You will see God move. Are you guys still with me this morning? Heaven dispenses faith in proportion to what we face. Faith is like a muscle. When it is taken into the gym of life, it can do little in the beginning, but as it is exercised in little day-by-day -day things, it grows considerably until it's able to accomplish the greater tasks in life. When we learn how to yield more to Jesus, you know, when I counsel married couples, and say, we fight all the time. And I tell them, well, what starts the fight? Well, she complains or he complains. And then I'll ask them both. Do you guys ever complain to God before you complain to each other? Because my Bible says that prayer moves the hand of God. And so if I complain to God, he's going to take care of that issue. Not only that, but when I complain to God, I get some things off my chest. 
And that, that yoke, that burden becomes his and not mine because his burden is easy and his yoke is light. And so sometimes I realize that when I give that over to him, that complaint, sometimes he's already taken care of it in my heart because I confessed it to him. And then sometimes he tells me, well, oh, you're the issue. Just like he did with Don when Don told me that. You know what I started thinking, you guys, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you up here. You know, every once in a while, I, I would make jokes about that. Oh, yeah, well, it's not like this or not like that. And then, who wants to help me? The founder. <laughs> the founder. I was like, please forgive me, Lord, I repent. I haven't told him yet, but I'm going <laughs> to. So come back all we thought over later, and you guys will know why. Come back kicking rocks over here. <laughs> Amen. Because he's brutally honest, but I like that. I need that. Amen. Now, I'm allowing him to speak into me. I'll take it. Winding down. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Do you lack faith? Because you lack hearing. You can be in church. And you can listen. But you're not hearing. How many of you guys will be honest with me right here? And by the time you hit the door out there, you forget what the message is about. When we do that, we haven't truly heard what God is trying to say. I'm not God. I'm just a mouthpiece. That's, that's it. And the messages you get, he gives me earlier in the week. So I'm hearing them for the first time too. Just a few days before you or a week before you or two weeks or whatever. So we have to learn to hear God. Hear him, what he's trying to say. Because in every message, his word isn't going to come back void. He's got something to deposit into you and I. Trust me, if, if there's any conviction going on here, know that I was convicted earlier this week and part of last week concerning this topic. There's a sacrifice of his flesh. You know what I love what the Bible says? Who gave himself for me. Don't you love when somebody, like when you got married, when you were in that relationship, got married, whatever it was, um, that person gave themselves to you. But the only relationship that's eternal is the one between us and God. And he gave himself for you and I. Think about that. for Let that resonate with you for a little bit. In your situation, in the way you were living your life, the way I was living my life, he still gave his life for me. And he took me just the way I was. He didn't wait for me to get cleaned up. He didn't wait for me to get delivered. He took me just like I was. Amen? The sacrifice of his flesh. Who gave himself for me. Everything I've talked about today is possible only because Jesus went to the cross. He bore our sins. I can't even imagine. Imagine the feeling of having the sins literally of the world upon his shoulders on that cross. Every little sin. You know, and I'll tell you something. I think of my own sin and my when I the day I gave my life to the Lord, and the Lord played this real quick little reel in my head of all the people that I had hurt, all the things that I had done, how uh, you know, just wasn't a good husband, a good father, those things like that. I think about when that reel played, that was just me. He did that for me, so I, he could show me my need for him. Look, this is how much you need me. Let me play a little tape of your life right here. Look what you've done with it. And it, it broke me. But he put me back together that day. He said, you're forgiven of all that. Your slate is clean. Are we ready for a clean slate? Because as long as you have breath, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Yes, thank Amen. You. Are we ready for a fresh start, a new start? Because that's what, I'll tell you right now, that's what we need. That's what we need. We need a fresh start, a new start. I am so ready for that. I'm ready for new starts every day, every week. I was thinking about something. Uh, I kind of said it, something I can't remember what it was earlier in the week. And I remember it was something petty. And I was like, Lord, what? speak to me. Speak to me. Talk to me. I need to hear from you. And there are some times when I pray where I don't say anything at all. I'm just like, Lord, I ain't got nothing right now. Do you have something for me? Because I need to hear from you. You know what he told me? He said, my mercies are new every morning. We get a fresh start every day. 
every day when it concerns God, every day, we get like a new birth. I love that. Because every day I need it. Don't you? I mean, we have these thoughts. I mean, even though I'm not out there doing crazy stuff like I used to or whatever, uh, I still have thoughts. I know my heart. I know the way I think. And I'm like, oh, these people, Lord, you give me, can't you give me a normal people? <laughs> Why did I have to get the peculiar people? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm peculiar myself, I think, so it's like, it's what you get. <laughs> no, but you guys are good. You guys are good. I, 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 I can't complain. God is so faithful. You know, he has given me an amazing church that I am so grateful for. And just seeing the excitement from all you guys in this last, you know, six months, even in a time of pandemic, you guys were amazing. Amazing, amazing. And just, you were there and, uh, you know, encouraged me when you started coming back. And so good to see you. And for those of you that are even watching on Facebook, you know, we can't wait till the day we're all together again. Yes. You know, we look forward to that. We look forward to that for the rest of the congregation to come back. We're still praying for you. We haven't uh, forgotten you. You're still in our prayers and our thoughts. Amen. So just understand and realize that, that we love you. We love you. Jesus, and I'm winding down with this. He's the only one who can make the dead man alive. He is the only one who can break sin's bondage and set men and women free. He is the only one who can take a wrecked life, ruined life, doomed by sin, and change everything by the power of his saving grace. Some people this morning, if you would stand with me, they've heard this message. You might not know Christ. You might have a lost heart. You don't know what Christianity is about. You might think, man, you know, these people are kind of crazy. These people are, are, are kind of like, you know, too, a little too religious for me. Well, I think religion has a place somewhere in what we feel. But it's really more for us about a relationship with, with Jesus. Religion isn't a bad word. It's not a four-letter word. When we give our lives over to Jesus Christ, that's part of our salvation, the things that we do. I know when I gave my life to the Lord and had all the questions, He met me where I was. And every day I would ask God, I just want to be more like you and less like me. If there's somebody here this morning that feels the same, I want to let you know there is no sin that can be committed that God won't accept you and bring you back to him. Nothing. But it's biblical. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to live for him. I've tried, I've come up short. <laughs> the Nikes. I bought the shoes. I got the outfit. But I'm still not in the race. Hmm? The Bible tells us to run the race in such a way as to obtain the prize. Forward. The finish line is at hand. It's right in front of us. Others used to run the race for Jesus. Now you're in it for yourself. What can I get? Feed me. Feed me. Feed me. I don't want to feed nobody. I just want to be fed. I just want to be ministered to. I don't want to pour out what's been poured into me. And we don't admit that we think that way. But if we've been saved for a time... And we're in a spiritual lull right now in our service to God and His people. That might be you. I love you enough to be honest with you. Truthful with you. We got the track shoes. We got the sweats. We got the headbands. We're still at the starting line. I want to make sure that you get things back in order the way they're supposed to be. I want to make sure that you're, you still know you're in the race. There are some here that are running well. You hear the message. You bought the shoes. You're running the race for the glory of God. I want to encourage you this morning. 
keep running that race. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. It's not too late. Stay in the race. There is a prize to be won. The finish line is just ahead. It's right there. It's right there. Wherever you're at here today, I want to remind you, just do it. Don't think about anything that can discourage you from coming to the altars and just confessing to God, this is me right here. I'm the one that I hear the message, but I haven't even made it to the starting line yet. I don't even know what Christianity is all about. I thought it was this. I don't know. Maybe I'm confused now. But you want to give your life to the Lord, but you're afraid. You're afraid. I want to open the altars for you this morning. We're going to have a prayer team up here of people. They're going to pray for you. And you can speak right to them. It doesn't have to be made public to anything. We turn off the video when we do the, the altar call. Nobody will hear it. It'll be between you, the person praying for you, and God. Amen. Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus. For each one here today, Father. I pray that they would minister. Father God, you would minister your Holy Spirit upon them. Wherever they're at in their life right now, in their walk, or in this race, Father God, I just pray that you touch them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. I pray that your spirit would tug them, tug at their hearts for salvation, to stay in the race, to continue the good work you've begun within them. We thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do at these altars, Father. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this morning. Now I'm going to say a prayer that you can repeat after me and the church will say it along with us this morning. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you, a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe you died on the cross and you rose on the third day that you live forevermore. Holy Spirit, I invite you into my heart to rule, to reign, to be my God. Forgive me of all my sin, past and present. In Jesus' name I pray. The altars are open for you here this morning.